Now your drip campaigns are working so well that you're starting to get responses. What are you going to do to be sure that you stay in front of these people? What are you going to say if they say something to you? How are you going to track them? What kind of things do you want to be sure that you're doing inside your CRM now to be sure that you can instill trust and continue to be that person that they remember when it's time to do a real estate transaction. So in this video, we're going to go through this really quick. So get on in here and let's check it out. These are my top tips to remember, and I've probably already hit on most of these, but don't assume anything about your leads until, you know, you don't know their backstory. So just put them on a course, get them sent in drip campaigns. Don't turn them off until they either tell you to stop or they're ready to go. Okay. Just because they don't call you back does not mean they aren't interested. It's all in the timing of what's going on in their world, but your key, your whole big key is staying in there and staying top of mind because they're going to lose track of you otherwise when they are ready. I, I think I might've mentioned the first day I had someone come out of the woodwork five years later. So if you don't set this up, this is never going to happen. They're never going to find you. A two week drip campaign is not long enough. So make sure you've got nice long ones. Again, my program is providing that to you if you want it. Your lead gen companies are not lead converters. So do not leave this in their hands. If you're hiring a company to run ads for you and they do the integration, then they turn and they'll tell, okay, I'll turn on a campaign and they go in, all they're doing is going in and saying, if they don't get it from you, they're gonna go in and turn on the standard basic crappy, fluffy, rotten buyer campaign that that CRM has, unless it's mine. Um, so you need to get that prepped and tell them where you want it to go. You need to know two things. What's the ad say? And who's the audience? And if you're not telling them that, which you should be, by the way, but they can uh, guide you. But I need to know these things. And, and it's funny because when I talk to people and try to consult with them and I say, okay, what kind of ads are you running? Oh, we're running ads for new buyers. I go, well, what's the ad say? I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, how the heck are you going to follow up with these people? <laughs> what if it's a guide and you're not sending it? What if it's a list of homes and you're not sending it? They're probably promoting one of your listings and you're not sending it. You need to know these things. Send updated listings and market updates until they tell you to stop, which I've already kind of run that into the ground. Educate, offer to help, and respond fast. That's all what you're supposed to be doing in this campaign is that that will start instilling trust. And hopefully when you respond fast, they're going to start loving you. They're going to start raising their hands. When you're sending what they really want, if they tell you, Patty, I don't want that, what you're sending me, I want this instead, you better get on it and send it and fix it so that they're getting what they wanted, right? You can still keep the long-term campaign on because it's still there to help educate and do stuff. But at the same time, you need to know what that campaign says, because if, if you don't know what it says, and that's another key, you got to go in there and, and know how to go check what these things say, because I hear that a lot. I don't even know what it says. Uh, and Or they'll say, I don't get any response from it. Well, a no does not always mean no, by the way. Offer to send listing at a no obligation. And even if you make sure that though, like my, my seller campaign has a disclaimer at the bottom of it in the FISBO campaign that just says, if you've listed with somebody else, this is not meant to solicit your listing. Just try to at least keep yourself out of trouble. So far, luckily, um, but you just never know, right? But if you get permission from them to continue sending stuff and they'll, pro who's going to say no? I mean, most people aren't. So keep doing it because inevitably something might happen with the agent that they think that they love when they find out you're way better, they're going to drop them like a hot potato. You know, again, I'm not there to steal people, right? We're just there to be at a backup in this, in this kind of event. A lead is not dead until they opt out, which we talked about already. Okay. All right. So this is just a quick screen that's in the back of uh, your an IDX. So this is happens to be, I think, inside of my KV Core website. So when you get visitors, same thing goes on over there. So you can run searches and things in there. You can keep an eye on the last visit. You want to look and see what they're looking at. Because if you can see what they've saved or something they looked at, if you can see when they logged in last, if you can set up your notifications to tell you things um, or make sure that you're looking at those notifications you're getting from your website, because every time people come back in, 
Most of these sites are going to tell you this. So don't ignore that stuff because these are hot signs. And, and there might you might even have like a really cool widget on your home screen that's telling you your hottest people are these people based on some score that your your I, your IDX or your website's doing. Okay. So make sure that you're checking that too. And even if your CRM and your uh, website are connected like KV Core or Boomtown, they have this stuff. Notice the rating on this particular one. You're going to want to keep an eye on that because this is what the setup to do is to help you identify that. And so you need to get in here and, you know, make sure you're tracking this stuff.